it is such a great day today. that the French call, got their liberation at <laughs> this day. But what is this liberation for, I don't know. In no country where they had freedom and liberation, <clears throat> I have seen it has not worked something very much that was expected. Same in France. So the liberation through anger, when it comes, hatred, is the basis of these revolutions and these so-called achieved liberations. If the liberation takes place within yourself, so that you are no more slave of any one of these horrible destructive forces and negative forces, then it's a real liberation. The second thing that has happened in France, first time in Europe, it has been recognized as dharma. It's a very big thing and give a hand to it. <clears throat> it is recognized that Sahaja Yoga is dharma. It is, but today it was recognized. This is a very big thing. I must say credit goes to your leader and to all the Sahaja Yogis of France who have worked so hard to get this sanction, this uh, kind of a position. It's a very great thing. <clears throat> so today I was thinking that we'll have the puja of Sri Vishnu, who was the basis of dharma. So far we have never worshipped anyone who were the basics, <coughs> except for Shiva. We only worshipped the incarnations because they became as incarnation. Ganesha came as incarnation, the Goddess came as incarnations, Rama, Sri Krishna, Gurus, Christ, Buddha, all of them came as incarnations on this earth. And we worshipped the incarnations who came on earth specially. But today as Sahaja Yoga is established dharma, we have to know about Sri Vishnu, who is the basis of dharma. Later on, He came on this earth as Sri Ram, then as Sri Krishna, and ultimately as Kalki. It is a beautiful evolution of Sri Vishnu. So one has to understand what is the basis of dharma. If you know in the matter there are eight valencies. <coughs> they are negative, positive and neutral. 
but in human beings there are ten valences. And these ten valences are created by Sri Vishnu within us. They are protected, looked after and nourished by Sri Vishnu. And whenever he finds human beings falling down in their dharma, he takes his birth on this earth. Ultimate stage is the Virat. At that stage, this Vishnu principle divides into two. One goes to Virat, another to Viratangana. But the third principle is what you call as the Mahavishnu, which incarnated as Lord Jesus Christ. So all these three principles act at this time in Sastana, mainly. So the Virat is the principle in which you can see that the message of inner dharma is spreading all over the world. Not only that it is said in modern times that you don't do this, don't do that, don't, don't do that. No. No Ten Commandments. These Ten Commandments have to become your own nature. You are to be completely identified with this nature. So in the evolutionary process, if you see, well, it was the job of the Guru to establish these dharmas into you. And by these establishments, you were made a person who was dharma. But if you see in the world, whatever is told, written down, explained, verbally becomes a lip service. That's why we see all the religions who preached about the same things. And they all have gone in different lines. Some are money-oriented, some are power-oriented, some are violent and some are absolutely false. So when you see this, you are amazed how this principle of dharma has been ruined by human beings. Why could they not accept dharma? I have to say that there are two genes within us which are meant to protect us from committing sins against the mother and committing sins against the father. Those two genes get into mutation and then people start doing whatever they like. There is no control there. And this is what happened during our evolution. I would say in India, traditionally people are dharmic, very dharmic. The reason is for ancient times we have talked of dharma, we had sayings, and then there was a kind of a traditional built-in for thousands of years. At that time, we had also Egypt with us. But in Egypt and also in Greece, something went wrong with them.
<coughs> that we take the case of Greece, where they make all the gods look like human beings. They brought down the level of gods from dharma to other. And in Egypt, because of the kings of those countries, who were very much interested in the death, in their, uh, what do you call, graves, in building pyramids, all such things, not building up inside the dharma. This is the reason why in Egypt also the dharma went down very much and ultimately now Islam established. Islam came because people were adharmic. Also in Greece they accepted Orthodox Church because people had become adharmic. But these religions themselves were adharmic. They could not instill dharma within themselves. So how could they instill dharma into these people. And this happened very much in these countries and Vishnu's uh, avtaran, as they say, as a Narasimha came very near, very near Greece and very near Egypt, that is in Peshawar. In Peshawar, these things happened. So it was very close also to Egypt and to Greece. But they became very much against Vishnu because they thought their king was killed by them and all that. So all these Rakshasas entered into the area in Afghanistan and then they came to Egypt and to uh, Greece and tried to bring all the gods and goddesses to the ground. Long time back must be at least 10,000 years back, when Prahlada brought in the incarnation of Sri Vishnu. These Rakshasas went into, they were called as Asur, Asuras, As, Assyrians they call, but Asuras they were. And if you go to Egypt, you'll find the Sphinx there, just the opposite of what Narasimha was. The man is in upper level, upper uh, part and the lion is in the lower part. But Narasimha is just the opposite. Narasimha is the lion in the upper part and the man in the lower part. So they created this kind of an image which was just the opposite of Krishna. Because just to show that uh, we have another open Dunga, we have another kind of a big uh, incarnation which is just opposite and can fight Vishnu very well. <coughs> With these Rakshasas entering into these people, they developed a very aggressive nature, fighting nature, aggressive nature. They developed their muscles in Greece very much. And the whole of history of Greece, if you read, is really mad. One fighting another, another fighting another. They were killing each other, they were... I mean, there's no end to it till Alexander came to India and he saw a culture which was dharma and he was quite surprised. How these people live with symbols and all that, he said, all right, I had enough of it, he went. 
but in Egypt also they could not understand dharma at all because they believed in the dead, all kinds of uh, black magic and all that. So when the Islam came, they accepted Islam. So here came Christianity and there came Islam. They say in Russia, Zahar wanted to have some religion. So these, out of these, he asked the Christians, first he asked the Catholics to come and make them, all of them, religious, because he wanted to have some religion. The essence is Vishnu, but these perverted Vishnu Swarupas were there. Now they went into Russia one by one. So first came the Catholics, and Catholics said, you can't have so many wives, you can only have one wife. So they said, this won't fit us. Vishnu had only one wife, Ekapatnivar, one wife, even in Rama's life, same thing. Then they called for Muslims. So Muslims said that, all right, we can have many wives, but no drinking, no vodka. So they said, how are we to live without vodka? In, in all these religions there is a little, you see, part of dharma. In the first one, only one wife. In the second one, Islam, no drinking. They said, no, 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 we can't live with that. Then they sent for orthodox Christians, orthodox, orthodox is the word. And the orthodox said, you can have as many wives you like and you can drink as much as you Said, they said, this fits our dharma, and they accept. So the, any kind of restrictions you put on human beings, any kind, without realization, they will do exactly what is restricted. I've seen the Muslims now, for example. Once I was coming from Riyadh, going to London, I went off to sleep. When I got up, I saw all very fashionable women with all uh, exposed bodies and very fashionable men with boot eyes and all that. I said, what has happened? So I asked the air hostess, where did we stop? She said, nowhere. I said, from where these people have come? She said, they are the same. In Riyadh, they would cover their faces. They'll cover themselves with this thing. My son-in-law told me that I can't say I'm traveling, I'm going with you who is my mother-in-law. I'll be arrested. Even a mother-in-law, you cannot. Only if she should be your mother. Thank God our surnames were the same. So nobody arrested us. Such stupid things, you know, keeping women away, men away, uh, then uh, telling the women, you can't do this, you can't do that. And men doing all kinds of things. All this results into a very bad hypocrisy. Same with Christians. If you read Christ, what He has said is so tremendous that for everything He said, for example, he said, they say there should not be any adultery, but he says even you should not have adulterous eyes and it should not even come into your mind. Can you imagine what he said? 
Now tell me about Christian nations where women are becoming nude, naked, these men are looking at them and it's a nonsense going on everywhere. Can you believe that these are Christians and then on Sunday wear your hat and go to church? How can you call them Christians? There is no dharma at all. Going to church is another hypocrisy. And the amount of licentiousness that has come in the Western countries is the limit that one can reach. They do it in such a way that even animals won't do. The whole, whole lifestyle is such how to find our destruction. They want to destroy themselves. Why it doesn't happen in India so much? Because they know it is sin. They know it is sin. But then you have such things here that a priest is abusing children. How can you? You are a priest. Have some shame. Even in India there are priests like that. But not to this extent. That in the college and schools you find the higher authorities of the Catholic Church are there. Look at this Catholic Church, what sort of a Catholic Church is. Catholic means uh, Sanat is from the ancient, coming from the ancient Sanatana. It's coming the first. Where is it? How can you call themselves Catholics? They are the most modern cutters, that's what they are. What good thing are they doing? When I read about this Catholic Church, I think these people should really disappear into Arabian Sea because they are killing people. All right. Then they are making money. Then they are one with the mafia. They are bestowing awards on the mafia leader. Is this the Catholic Church? Is this what Christ wanted? So juxtaposition. Christ is here and this is in juxtaposition. Absolutely a different thing. Whatever was dharma is not there at all. So where do we go? If you think that becoming a, a Buddha, Buddhist, you are all right? Absolutely, you don't know how Buddhists are. They are the greatest beggars and the greediest people. Very many oriented. I know how many people have lost all their property because of this Dalai Lama. So now, where is the dharma? Dharma is within. And that is why this Vishnu principle is to be awakened within yourself. And this principle then expands into many ways, because Vishnu is the one who is the one who cures. We call him a Dhanvantari, means a doctor. He is the one who cures, because he is our preserver. He is the preserver of humanity. So if we preserve your dharma, then you don't get sick. And if you get sick, it is Vishnu who will preserve, who will cure you. So he is the one who is, uh, we can call Dhanvantari, is a doctor. Also he is Yama. Yama means the one who is responsible for our death. Of course, the Shiva, the, we can call the principle of existence, spirit has to go first. 
and then yama comes to take charge of the body. It is who he who decides. Where should you go? Should you hang in the limbo or should you be sent to the hell or if you can go to heaven? All decision is taken by with the help of Mahavishnu, that is Christ. So his job is to come when there is a dead body lying, to take away the spirit and judge the spirit and put it in its proper place. Now a person who is an adharmi, suppose, such a person, he takes him out and puts him into hell. But before it is done sometimes, these black magic people arrive, take away the skull of such a dead body, because when you are burnt the skull is still left or the bones and try to control the spirit before Yama enters in, onto the sea. Thus they utilize that person, his spirit and manipulate it and use it to harm others or to entice others, they control them. So this is the greatest of them. This is the worst thing that one can do, is to take away the spirit and uh, use it for mesmerism or entice. But at the death of such a person, such a tantrika, Yama gives him most horrible death in the sense that the spirit doesn't go out easily and such a person suffers, suffers and what's the release, but he cannot get a release. And it's a very big ordeal for that person to die. It's a punishment of being such a horrible tantrika that you have tortured so many lives. So the idea of sin came through dharma and other. We have idea of sin which is very superficial sometimes. For example, when Arjuna was fighting in the war, he said, how can I kill these people? They are my brothers, they are my sisters, my relations, uncles, how can I kill them? Shri Krishna said, they are already dead. You are not going to kill them. So how are they dead? Because they are on the side of other. So they are already killed. But you are on the side of dharma and if you fight for dharma, then even if you die, you will be saved. Now this is stretched too far in many scriptures also, which is very absurd, like saying that if you die and bury yourself, it's no soul they talk bury your body, then the, from the body after five hundred years you, your body will come out and you will be saved. After five hundred years what will remain of the body? Such absurd ideas there are in these three religions, Christian, Jews and Muslims. That's why they bury people. Now burying people means you are occupying the land and also keeping the boots there. Like in, I was surprised when I first came to Paris that in the center of Paris they have got such a big cement. Naturally people drink here because most of the drunkards are sitting there inside the graves 
and they are inciting them to drink. It's very surprising that <coughs> in the West, They have such absurd ideas that when you'll be buried, then you'll be resurrected like Christ. Just take it. Christ was resurrected between three days. He died on Friday, resurrected on Sunday morning, not even three days. But if you keep somebody for five hundred years who is not even Christ, if Christ's body is different, what will come out of it? And so they are burying people. Only realized souls should be buried, not every common person, because they still have their desires, their, they still want some things, their souls might be hanging around there, you see, that body. So why should you keep the body in a place for years together. Then after some time they'll dig it up and make houses there. And all the hoods must come in the house. So to understand dharma we should also understand how we are going to deal with the death of general people and the death of surgeons. Only if you are dharmic, it is not sufficient. There are many people who don't do anything wrong, they are very austere type, something, but they are not in balance normally. They are very hot-tempered. If they are not hot-tempered, they are absolutely recluses, sit in the Himalayas like that. But those people who are dharmic, in the real sense of the word, once they ascend, to the state of Virat, then only they are the people who should be preserved, their body should be preserved. Because the dharma from the Navi goes to your brain, and brain supplies to all the nerves the energy of the spirit. So the whole body of a realized soul is full of vibratory awareness. If such a body is buried, you can even get fragrance. And from a distance you will know that there is some saint being buried. If you remember, there are seven photographs of mine where the light is falling on me. That was a village called Miyakitaka. They told me that Mia, one Sufi saint, died in this place, so he is buried here. Immediately I felt the vibrations. And when I was sitting on the dais, I saw him in the form of light, and he started throwing light on me. And I was very happy, but when I stopped, he stopped. He didn't become a bhut, no, he didn't come. He became the light. And wherever it was necessary, he showed his presence. So we are following some dharmas. In Sahaja Yoga, you are supposed to follow Vishnu principle. You have to follow Vishnu principle. You cannot say that, Mother, we cannot. For example, Vishnu doesn't like smoking, tobacco, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like alcohol. He doesn't like these drugs. He hates drugs. He doesn't like many medicines that human beings are producing. For example, these antibiotics, if a surgery takes, he'll vomit. It is a real surgery. Whatever may be the quantity, whatever may be the quality, so many medicines 
you cannot. So automatically you become like a Brahmin who avoids, no, no, not this. Then you won't go and have food in a place where there are people who are against the yoga or who are not dharmic at all. You won't like it. I don't have to tell you that don't look at the women. You won't. You won't look at them. Automatically. Your eyes out of dharma will become straight. Nor will I have to tell women that they should run after men. Very few are like that who are struggling still. But most of you just drop all these bad habits and come to a state where you just automatically become dharma. Because when the Kundalini rises and occupies uh, your brain, then you understand what is right, what is wrong. Through your vibrations you will not take something that is not good. Food, you will see vibrations, is not good, you will not eat. Anything that is not suitable, you will just say, no. I don't have to tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You will never kill anyone. You will never commit any sin. Automatically. I don't have to tell you, don't do this sin, don't commit this sin, don't commit that sin. Of course, if you are not yet a matured Sajogi, then maybe. But with maturity, I don't think you will take to wrong things and you will enjoy your virtues. The things that are called our virtues are Vishnu principles. We say this man is virtuous. He's very limited in the mundane language, his virtues may be uh, he is good at drawings or something, nothing more than that. But if you say virtuous, it means he is a surgeon. Now Christ has gone so far that if somebody slaps you on your left cheek, you turn the right to that person. Now think of it, how subtly is God, in patience and tolerance. Now think of the Christian nations which went all around the world and plundered. Spanish went to America, killed all these people there. English came to India, killed so many people there. Then some French also went to various African countries and finished them all. These are supposed to be Christians. By what means are they Christians? Not only that you have to, not to aggress, that's not the only point. If somebody aggresses you, then you turn your another cheek to that person. This was said by Christ. Every ten every commandment he has tried to bring down to the level of Sahaja How the beauty of Sahaja Yoga will shine through you and how you will express your spirit, which is in the Matthews, I think, second chapter, where the blessed are written out after that. It's clearly written down what you should how tolerant, how patient, how compassionate, how loving. It is remarkable how such a great incarnation of Lord Jesus Christ was brought to such a low level by Christians. They have no business to call them Christians. They are the greatest heathens I could think of. The way they have ruined their culture, everything. What about Islam? Islam, as in the Bible, Paul has done all the mischief. I don't know, he must be another Rakshas. Islam also, Quran was written by a very horrible fellow. Muhammad Sahib never knew how to read and write, and there was one fellow called Muayya. 
to such a horrible fellow, he authorized by just like Paul. In that he put the Shariat. Now Shariat was meant for, uh, for Irmaya, what do you say in English? Uh, Jeremiah. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah has written that when Moses came, Adi Guru, he came with the message of Ten Commandments from the hill of Tur, he found these Jews going into complete decadent society, which we see today around ourselves. And he was so angry that he said that for you these are the punishments. But this was Moses gave to Jews at that time, not for today. But the Muslims are using that left and right among themselves. And they have become so quarrelsome that they are fighting among themselves and I think they'll kill each other and finish one. There is no dharma of love. There is no dharma of compassion. The one who is not a Muslim is to be killed somehow. And the one who is a Muslim is also killed because any Muslim cannot change his religion. He cannot. If he's a Muslim, he's a Muslim. He has to die as a Muslim. If he tries to do anything else, he'll be killed. If he runs away from the Islam, he'll be killed. It's a prison. It's a prison. And in that prison one has to live. You are not to question anything, you are not to ask for it. The other day I was watching the Hajj, and <coughs> there was one fellow <coughs> from Sudan. He was really like Hitler, talking like Hitler. And I asked someone to translate it to Arabic. And he was just pouring poison. He was calling everyone as heathens, they have no truth with them, we have the truth. What sort of a truth you have? What, are you, what good are you doing anywhere? What truth you have got? And he said all these nonsensical things that we should kill all those who don't have the truth, this, that. And uh, I was looking at it. And the question came to me, he's saying all these things in my presence, I don't know what's going to happen to all these people. And second day there was a stampede of thirty thousand people who had gone for Hajj. So these stupid people in charge of religion will kill all the Muslims this hour, finish them off, and think that we have achieved a lot. Then about the Jews. Jews have been waiting for a Savior and all that. And they didn't like Christ. But they didn't kill Christ, I must say. They didn't kill. This was the idea of uh, Paul to put it. But the Jews never realized what the Dharma is. Because Moses just gave them such a awful Savior. They never realized, so they shut the Sharia and said, with nothing doing, we do not. And they became extremely money-oriented, miserly, money-oriented. They lend money to somebody. That fellow goes on paying the interest, 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 then he cannot pay. So they'll confiscate, confiscate his house, sell it. They became very, 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 very cruel people and also licentious, very cruel. So one Rakshasa called Freud was born in their society. Freud was a Jew. And people, you see, he understood what is the weaknesses of human beings are, and he was accepted in that stupid America, very much. So much so that they lost all sense of dharma. When he said all these nonsensical things, 
about the mother. How could there be any dharma? Now they are writing downfall of Freudian empire, fraudulent fight, and now there are so many books. As a result of this, what has happened? Because you were not so traditionally bound, and this kind of stupid religions came in the West. Through these destructive people, you lost faith, lost complete faith. Ah, it's all right, go to church, come back home, what is there? is talking like that. The priests, the mullahs and all these leading such a horrible life. Completely people lost faith. And when they lost the faith, they lost their personality. They lost the personality. And I am surprised how people follow fashions, as I told the other day. They followed fashions. Anybody says you should have skin head, they will cut off their head. Tomorrow somebody says you cut your nose, they'll all cut their nose. You dress up like this, they will dress up like that. Say torn clothes, all right, torn clothes. One person starts it, that is the entrepreneur, and everybody follows. Traditionally, if you had found out that this dress suits you, should have kept to it, but these entrepreneurs, whatever they tell you, you take it. As if you have no brain, as if you have no capacity to understand. But for a dharmic person, he says, get lost. He won't. He won't say, why should I waste my money? accumulate all these nonsensical things. So when I started Sahaja Yoga, I was reluctant, but I told everyone that you better put some oil in your head. You can wash it next day, but in the night put some oil. Otherwise, after some time, I'll see all men bald-headed and women wearing wigs. I am a mother, so I am going to tell you the truth. With great difficulty, Sir Jogi I said. I said, you can wash it next day. It is necessary for you to have... It is a simple thing. Because the hair grow on oil, it is a very simple thing I told them, that you do like this. And they would not agree. They would not change it. But thank God now some sense has come and they are doing few things, very few things are to be done for Sahaja Yogis to get all right in their health and also in their wealth. They don't have to do much because they are standing in Dharma and they are in the kingdom of God. They are under the protection of Virat. But still, there are certain things you have to do, certain. I didn't say that don't sue. You just gave up yourself. The alcohol, all these things, you gave up yourself. Because you have the light. And despite the fact that you come from a culture where there is no personality, people are like sheep, now you are not. Now you are individualistic. To be individual is impossible in the West because you must dress up the way everybody dresses up. If there are punks, you all move with like pumps, punks. If the one woman has this kind of hair, you make the same style. Especially on the hair, I don't know why. Maybe it is the power of Iraq. Tax mostly on hair. Then the clothes and everything, you have realized that chastity is a part of Dharma. It's not only women, 
is not the chastity of women, but the chastity of men and women is their power, is Ganesha's power. This is the dharma which you have accepted. I never told you anything, but you have accepted and you have imbibed and you are enjoying. Now if they accept us as dharma, what is so special? We are the only dharma. The rest are all adharmis. They call themselves dharmi. They have no dharma. Unless and until you have dharma by which you get a balance, wisdom, you cannot ascend. But if you ascend even without dharma, Sahaja Yoga is so great, I've seen people who were quite adharmic and all that just got rid of it. If you ascend, then dharma trickles down, they become dharma. So many try to write to me about their past, I just tear it off, finished. Now you have become lotuses, why are you telling me about something I am not interested? So once you get your Realization, this is the best way and I just thought of this, especially when I saw the situation in the world that was coming in this Kali Yuga, I thought in this chaos, unless and until you raise their Kundalini, dharma cannot be established. This, if I have done anything, I have done this. It's to find out a method, a mass, giving Realization and the problem will be solved. You don't have to tell them anything, don't do, don't do nothing, just they do it. It was successful, I must say, very successful. Among you I find my vision being established. Whatever concern I had, whatever worry I had about this Paris is over now, finished. I used to come three times in a year and everybody would say, Mother, what is this? Why do you oblige them so much? So I said that this is the gate of hell, let me go. And now this has become the gate of heaven. So far us not difficult to establish Vishnu principle. But to recognize that we have this. You see, suddenly I find Sahaja Yogis become extremely humble and they don't want to know what they have. You can cure people, you are a Dhanvantar. You can give Realization to people. All Vishnu principles are now awakened within you and you must utilize it. I wish we had Vishnu, I thought, so. Vishnu Sastra Navayaka, I? Ah. Now there are thousand names which I would not like you to say, but at least some names of Vishnu, if you can say, you will understand how this Vishnu principle is awakening to such an extent that somebody said, Mother, no, I don't want to work in the public. I said, why? I don't want to have that ego back in me. <laughs> they are so sweet. They are afraid of their ego being coming. No, 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 no. It won't come back now because here sits the Vishnu as Virat. He look after them. And you have that <coughs> Vishnu Pada in yourself. So much could be said about it. But I think you should read the one thousand names of Vishnu. <coughs> and you will know how many qualities you can have. May God bless you. Why not open the windows and doors here? There are no doors.
ਕਰੋ ਤੇ ਪਾਵਾ